This is The Cool Kitchen on Freeform Portland, Rock XS Radio, Magic Monster Radio, KCLA 99.3 FM in Los Angeles, DCRC Radio 1, 1075 and how.fm in New Zealand, and onairtunes.com presents primalradiolive.com. And I'm Ola, and I have a super exciting show. Ride have recently reformed, and I was able to get a hold of Mark Gardner at their London show to talk about ride and a whole bunch of other interesting topics fantastic so awesome and that's also why i played the first track that i did that was taste from 1990 by ride to get you in the mood for this fabulous discussion now i'd like to thank kelly pope who runs the official creation records online social networks for making this happen thank you kelly you are awesome Okay, so for any folks out there that are fans of Creation Records artists and you'd like to keep up on the info of the bands and what they're doing, if you go to the official site, it is labeled always as at Creation Records. All right, let's get into this interview. Okay, I am so excited to be here with Mark Gardner from Ride. Hello. I'm here at the Roundhouse with you. You're going to go on stage very shortly. So exciting. But let's start at the beginning. 1988. I heard two conflicting stories about how Ride started. It was, as you went to see a Smiths gig or it was based on Manchester rave music? Neither. Okay, so... <laughs> Andy, Andy went to see the Smiths when he was a teenager. That's one gig that I really missed out on. But I was seeing people like The Cult and The Damned at the time. But I, I don't know why I just missed the Smiths. There is some truth in that. I was at school with Andy. Um, Steve was a couple of years above us. I got really close with Andy at school. We kind of exchanged a lot of music. He was definitely the guy that got the Smiths earlier than I did. And I realised that they were incredible. And it kind of, bands like that helped cement me and Andy's friendship. I was more kind of into the early um, hip hop at the time, or, you know, like Africa Bambata, people yeah, like that. Yeah, I remember that. So, which I thought was amazing as well. So there was like, you, you know, but I mean, obviously we were into the sort of classic bands at the time. We started playing a lot of music together. I mean, I realized he was a genius guitar player. He probably realized, and we, by surprise, it was a surprise for me that I could kind of sing okay. So I kind of got more the job of the singing as Andy took more of the guitar duties, but I was also learning and getting my guitar thing happening as well and then we we applied to an art school it could have been Oxford or Banbury we both got into Banbury so we thought well this is even more kind of like something smiling fortune smiling on us and of course who do we meet but Loz who's probably one of the world's great drummers so like I say we already knew Steve from school so we kind of had suddenly we were like there were two of us and now we've got bass and we've got drums and like a rhythm, proper rhythm machine dub rhythm machine so that was it let's talk about the art school because mm. they're the, you know, there's the music, but actually the art influenced the music of Ride. Yeah, we, we did it. I remember we were doing like a sort of uh, project about trying to paint movement into pictures. So the whole thing about movement and Ride was probably in our heads. And that was around the time that, well, I think it was Lost that sort of came up with the idea that with this band, you know, we just didn't have a name. We just sort of suddenly went, how about just Ride? And uh, we thought, actually, that works really well. Um, but yeah, I mean, and also it's the first time that we were 
our creativity or our creative endeavors were taken seriously by the people at college. You know, they understood that the art foundation is to find what, what your passion is and within the art framework. Okay, we went a little bit outside the framework of the art college because we, you know, we ended up being interviewed at that time or going to meet Warner Brothers, we put in the book, people like that, whilst other people were writing in kind of Manchester Uni for the next step on. So, but you know what, fair play to the art school people because they were like, that. you know, you guys probably found your passion in art isn't completely on the syllabus, but it seems to be music for you, so go for it. You know, with, with give it everything you got kind of thing. And it was good, it's nice to be, because before then, if you do art, in, you know, in this, we weren't in a great school, me and Andy, it was a trainee, it was a sort of just a pretty rough, comprehensive school, really, in, in Oxford. If you sort of try and go the more art route, you're just seen as the kind of dosser, and that you're not really, you know, they're, they're all about science and maths there. It's not, you're not, you're not taken seriously, sort of creatively. But it added to the whole feeling that you're outsiders, that you're trying to, you know, you, you're going off all the syllabuses, and if we're going to do this, we really need to make it work. Yeah. Um, so I think it's sort of strengthened that kind of resolve to try and really make this thing work. Well, a lot of bands have that background in the 80s mm. and the, you know, and even from the 60s, you know, the Pink Floyd art yeah. school yeah. background kind of thing. You know, it's like almost like an English tradition. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's doing about expanding sort of horizons, consciousness. It's all, to me, it's all part of that kind of creative, that kind of your own right to a bit of imagination, madness. It's like, that's kind of, to me, what makes artists a bit more interesting you do there is a bit of kind of slight madness involved in it or whatever it's that indulgence in a sort of creative thing which is so far away from being an exact science and for me that's why it keeps it really interesting it still keeps music interesting because there isn't a formula at all thank god you know i mean that oh, okay some people do yeah. use a pop formula to yeah. do a certain thing but i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about music that, that there's still people that are trying to kind of strive to keep and make interest in music you know which I believe we were a part of a movement as we talked about my buddy Valentine people like that that did strive to do something a bit more interesting and different and not so traditional with guitars and songs and pedals and you know noises and sounds basically. I read in one of your interviews that you were influenced by Rothko and Pollock and Kooning by artists, and I was really quite intrigued by the Rothko idea because if I was to, if mm. I was to equate what I, what the ride sound is, especially Rothko, sounds sometimes I don't know. It's yeah, I mean, it's mood, it's atmosphere. Yeah, it's a mood, exactly. It's he yeah, created a mood. I mean, Loz is probably more on the Rothko thing because also at the same time, I really liked all the old Italian kind of Renaissance guys, you know, Mantegna, all those people that first started to paint three three D you know, like the perception grids to get depth into painting and just, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't really into the, a lot of the religious subject matter, but then you have but to realise... Like the, the, they were doing, they were recreating the Greek school of, of like, you know... Yeah, the, the well, I think Da Vinci Greeks. and people like that are alchemists, you know, I mean, I mean, they're, they're, these people are on different wavelength completely and they were actually being funded by people they didn't believe in but they just to create some amazing work for that you know to forward their kind of work and there's it's a big story but you know you can look into the codes and what's talking about the Da Vinci code necessarily but it does tap into the fact that Poussin, Tenier, all, all those guys were were kind of probably part of a kind of order of that kind of knew a little bit more about what really went on in, in life and with regards to religion and stuff. It kind of starts with... I, a cult, I, kind of, you know, hidden knowledge. Like, it's hidden because like the, the powers that be, no, it's just that they hit, the powers that be there would, they'd, they'd, they'd run in, well, they wouldn't be commissioned to do work if, if people just thought these people were kind of more, if they realised they were more into the sort of a cult, more, you know, they, they hid their knowledge for reasons, if you know what I mean. Because you're they, an elite. Yeah, or, or maybe not an elite, but just because the powers that be would, would have just deemed you a heretic, you know, and that leads to all sorts of problems. Um, we digress. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a few people that'll enjoy the digression. Um, like you said, it was Lawrence who said, I mentioned Rothko, because mm. it, I do feel that that one, you know, you look at a Rothko and it's just kind of like, there's, it's very simple. There's, there's it's a warmth and there's a darkness. It's kind of like, it's yes. mixing those kind of elements in a quite a simple, simplistic, sort of raw kind of way. It's I, mean, I wouldn't say the music is simple, but I think you, you do have a warm sort of darkness. Yeah, I, I think so. I feel, that's how I feel. 
as a person. I think there is always, I like, I like, I mean, it's a battle now because everyone wants to film everything that you ever do, it seems. But I, I think a lot of what is enchanting about music is mystery and darkness and the kind of, I think that's it's quite, it's a little lost in a, in a way in this day where everyone's filming everything. So I, I like the kind of more mysterious thing. I don't need to know so much about musicians and bands. I don't need to know their life stories really. I've always, I can just take the music and love the music and just go off and make my own. I love landscape, I love the travelling thing, we, we embrace the social media a bit, but I'm not really taking pictures of myself, I'm taking pictures of where we are, landscape stuff, which I think is far more interesting than, here's another one of me and somewhere else, you know, it's like, who gives a toss about that? It's like, you know, wow. With the idea of shoegaze and noise, a lot of the music that was coming out from that time period where you blossomed from, hmm. and the idea of ride, the idea that you, the music sounds very much like it is a journey. Like, like it, yeah. there, you, you're basically it's the kind of music you, you, you sit in a car and watch, like Iggy, yeah. Iggy Pop's Passenger. Really. Yeah, I agree. I think the music uh, that can work on that level is, is really special, and a lot of that music that works on that level worked on us. It's, it influenced us. I, you know, like when you're saying that, it makes me think of like Sen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I have a motorbike, and it's that thing where you're in the picture, the scenery is, you're part of the scenery, and it's you're moving through it, and you can smell it, and you can taste it, but you're not. It, yeah, you rather than observing everything through a car out of a window, it's like something about being in that scenery and in, 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 in a totally immersed in it. But in emotion. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about shoegaze because I mean, I read that Andy, <laughs> Andy's not impressed with this term. It was. It's just lazy to me. It's just lazy. It's tags, and I get I get kind of what people get at. You know, it's it's inside. You know, it's just a little bit misleading if people think. What I don't, what I don't like about the connotation is if you're just sort of stood there, not not engaged and committed to what you're doing. You know, just sort of. I think that's really stupid because you, you, we've always been completely committed to the music and what what we're playing. You know, um, so that's. I think it's a bit misleading in a way, and also I think it's a bit wide now. It seems that any band that maybe early ninety ninety one was yeah, or, or even now like loads of bands you're hearing and it's like. You know, just because they're not doing the traditional rock and roll thing or whatever, then and if they're trying to experiment, and there are so many more pedals now, there's so many more different sounds and places to go. It seems now that anyone doing that kind of gets like a bit of a sort of shoegaze tag or whatever. And I, I, I don't know, it tags it to me just a little bit lazy, but and people um, sometimes need them for. A quick of course, break. yeah, and I understand that. And I so, you know, you I can't, I can't, you can't fight against something like that. It's fine. It's, it's, I thought at the time it was just a bit ridiculous because we were doing world tours and we come back and it's like oh some people in English press have invented this idea that they're calling you shoegaze. It's like oh okay, well we've just done a world tour. You're, Do you think we really you're part give it to us? I think you're to say that you're to, that you're not part of the movement would be inaccurate. But no, I like, think they are. I mean, from what I gather, we're very much sort of you know. We get we get it with the Valentines with you know Luke, maybe some of the early and, I, and I'm quite happy with that. It just just doesn't. But it's you know I, I get the impression that you like the idea of a noise experimental band. More, yeah. You know which I mean I then you get Nirvana come that come in and they're like then it's, it's grunge. Not, it's called yeah, grunge. Yeah, it's, it's like what does grunge mean? What does shoegaze mean in the end? It's like but people understand okay there was a bunch of groups probably Nirvana spearheaded grunge and then people Nirvana come behind. Was more I think the idea of Nirvana and the Pixies. I mean, I mean, Nirvana was influenced by the Pixies. He wanted yeah. to be the Pixies, and it was Sonic about Youth, harder. Was a big influence too on them. Yeah, yeah. Sonic, yeah. Youth, yeah. Sonic Youth. Yeah. yeah, but he wanted. He was. He was more like, uh, like a kind yeah. of more classic rock yeah. sound. And I know you. It's ironic because you also have classic rock it's in there, sound, yeah. sounds in there, but yeah. it's sound more like space rock, and that's where shoegaze yeah. comes in. Space noise. Exactly. And Nirvana's yeah. like noise, classic. Maybe. Yeah, the grunge, grunge. That's what I mean. It's just like grunge, grunge. Weird. Like, it's weird. Like, but that's true. Guys, weird. Term. Space rock kind of makes a bit more sense to me. I get that a bit more than because you're more you're more reflective. There's yeah. a bit more yeah. of a, and more hypnotic. Well, I'm spacey. I like you know. I was, I've been a spacey guy for a lot of my life. <laughs> and probably not. Maybe not quite as that space as I was the first time around. Now, all you can do at the time is try to make interesting music and put everything, your passion, all of it into it. One, to make you keep interested in what you're doing and you hope that it, you know, that it connects with the people. And, it, and we obviously did and obviously, you know, some of those other 
the better groups in that genre or out of that genre or whatever, you know, I think um, they did and that's what you hope and whatever that is, whether it's shoegaze, space, or whatever it is, it doesn't, to us it's just like, it's just the kind of sound, it's the kind of music that we make and you know what, and in the end it's, it's not us that, that decide that, it's the people, the people... Decide what it is and how yeah, they like it. Yeah, and the people have decided as well and called for this as much as we want to do this, we've wanted to do this for three years. And for me then in the end I feel just really happy and very heartened that something we did creatively has stood the test of time because I believe that is the ultimate test on any kind of artistic venture really. You know? Yeah.
Okay, a bit of music to break things up. Some noise, psych, space rock from Ride. This one's also from 1990. And this was the excellent Close My Eyes. Now, here's a good place to plug my partner in crime, Ambient Airwaves, purveyors and promoters of shoegaze, noise, psych, and space rock. They have a YouTube, Last FM, Pandora, and Facebook, featuring some of the best tunage in this area of music. Just search Ambient Airwaves at any of those sites, and ye shall find musical treasures of such delights. Okay, let's return to my chat with Mark Gardner from Ride. Now at this time, there's this revival of that time. Mm -hmm. It's coming, it's here. It's like we had an 80s revival, it went on way too long. And now there's a 90s revival, or there's something, you know, where a slow dive, MBV, all these bands are coming back. You start off, you have the bang, 1990, nowhere. And then, and you were touring a lot. And then, you know, suddenly was, I read that you were touring a lot and then you, then you were like, oh my God, we gotta stop. But then you stopped for too long. Um, kind of, but we couldn't really stop. I think this is the trouble and it's like, we just weren't very good at saying no. So we just felt like we were- You should do it while you could. Yeah, and of course you've got, as a world that was concerned then, you've got Warners wanting to do this, you know, you've got Creation saying, you know, and it was just, we, like I say, we just went, we just go, 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 go all the time. And, but then, you know, that was the nature of ride. It's what that, and of that ride, I think it for me, in hindsight, the way we were going was also what made the music exciting. It was always going to crash at some point. You had this period, and you were making this music, and then like ninety three, ninety four, there was a change in the air. You took some mm. time out. What was going on? What you started off doing? Because there was going to be a new direction, and of course, Brit Pop, another tag, mm. um, was coming into being, and. When you get to around the, the time of Carnival of Light, mm -hmm. you guys are almost in separate camps. I'll know? tell you what happened, the, the, the difference, it was different the way we started to work because we had some time away, we actually do more of the writing individually. The way we worked a little bit more before, it was kind of, we'd have things half written and then we'd come in and then Lord Steve, everyone was a bit more involved in the creative process. It just, all, it, all that happened was just me and Andy were a little bit more separated. Then we brought our tunes in and we kind of had good ideas about what how we wanted them to be and Jesus, we were just trying our hardest to follow but you know where we're going blank again, which is not an easy task. I think we'd also, because we'd been playing Nowhere Going Blank Again for so long, every show, I think it was natural that we wanted to expand, change the sound. We embraced a little bit more of the classic way. It probably was a precursor to what was happening with Britpop because mm. we were aware that that was kind of around us a bit, but also it kind of tapped into how you know, we worked with George Kudis that was a bit more, you know, wanted to, wanted to sort of set about doing the creation cover. So I think it was just a natural, again, another way that it, it, that it went. I read somewhere that you guys were having songs on separate sides of the album. And I think maybe Andy said this, I'm not exactly sure, but it was kind of like they were, allow they were allowing us to be like acting like babies or something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, which... Which, there was a bit of that going on. I mean, you know, we were a bit out of our heads, a bit off, off it as well. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's lots of stuff going on, you know, I mean... But you were part, like, this art things, out... Things didn't help forward momentum sometimes. We were going a little bit sideways together. Actually, in the end, I didn't remember there being, like, a big problem about sides of record. It just, it just seemed to flow better that way as a record. Just, it's just not, not it like, you side, my side, or we've got to separate. We didn't really feel like that at all. You know, I just think again, we, we, we were just trying our hardest. There's just people that care and passionate about what we're doing to try and keep keep it going, you know? Um, because when I read about Carnival of Light, that was when you guys were like, you know, doing the rock star thing, you were partying, you are having fun. And yeah, like, but to be honest, I did party early days as well. I mean, the f really early days with McGee, um, when I, as I got to know Alan, that's the first time I was introduced to odd things here and there. Yeah. But you know, it. I have to say it was just very recreational, we, we, we weren't kind of addicts anyway, I was probably a bit of a pot addict, but other than that, we just dipped in and in, in and out, and that was good because it's all part of expanding, you know, creativity. I'm not saying that stuff is good at all, because I think ultimately drugs, drink any of it, just makes people go sideways, really. Too much work. of it, yeah. So yeah, too much, you know, but like I say, I think we had a right to explore, I was always going to be someone that wanted, you know, I like to go to lots of different places and I like to try different things to see what, how that would affect creativity and all sorts, so it's quite in an experimental way. And you know what, we were a really busy band, so we, you know, we didn't have time to sort of become like 
drop out weird druggy people that weren't you know we were really busy so you can't operate if you you know if you had and what goes up must come down kind of thing you learn all those things quite quick you know mm -hmm. I, I would give my daughter different advice to what, how I did things, you know, obviously now, but I don't regret any of it, to be honest with you. Sure. No, I don't think so, because... It's all part of the, the, my, my kind of makeup. But what I want to say is, it, as, a, as an artist, don't you mm. think you have a duty to uh, do things to yeah. explore the full realms of humanity? Yeah, I do. To represent them? I just think that was, that's the sort of person I, mean, I was, probably people we all were. We all, if we weren't those sort of people, when them ride would probably never happen in the first place. We were always up for the adventure, up for the ride, excuse the pun. <laughs> you know, in the end, you know, I kind of found my way. And of course, as a teenager, that was my sort of classic cliche dream, you know, that I just wanted to, well, after I saw bands, which blew me away, I just thought one day I'd love to be in a band and do that. Not really thinking it would become 20 odd years but longer, you know, here I am. It's like, you never would have dreamt that, but in the end, I've just got to say, we've done something really right. But actually, I read that amongst yourselves, Carnival of Light, uh, you actually were not very happy with the album, and you called it Carnival of Shite. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it's, it's so taken out of context. I think someone <laughs> along the line might have just said it as a, like, a funny thing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and then it's suddenly, and I heard it on an interview yesterday, it's like, no, I mean... <laughs> it's I in think, your wiki, think, that's why... Yeah, yeah, well there we go, it's in the wiki. I mean, it's just so... Someone might have said something as a joke, and then it gets taken out of context. It's like, I think that record's fantastic. There's loads of amazing music Good. on that record. We played Natural Grace last night. You know, we play in you know, time to time would normally be in the set, but it's just not because we haven't got keyboards at the moment. So, yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm really proud of that record. and. Um, Great, loads of great stuff in that record. So we joke, you know, we say stupid things, and like if some journalist somewhere along the line suddenly heard it and was thinking, "Ooh, you, right, they're really down on this on this record." It's you gotta like, get somebody to update that wiki. <laughs> yeah.
is Marbles Jackson on Ola's Cool Kitchen. Rock XS Radio. Magic Monster Radio, KCLA, 99.3 FM in Los Angeles. DCRC Radio 1. 107.5 Antau FM, New Zealand. That was another musical break, and after all that, I just had to play something off of Carnival of Light. This track is from 1994, and the title is How Does It Feel to Feel? And that's by Ride. Now, this is a fundraising announcement for any listeners on here on Freeform Portland, a.k.a. anyone listening to what was Radio 23. My, sh- my show will soon be broadcasting on Freeform Portland, and we are fundraising heavily to launch the FM station in Portland to carry the international stream. Now, I'm asking my listeners on here on Freeform Portland to help out with any donations to this like most worthy and awesome cause. Basically, I need to raise about $80 a week during May, and I can do it if, like, two people give $40 and they get, like, this T-shirt and stickers kind of perk. Um, oh, we have an Indigo page, so if you want to donate, just, like, search Indiegogo Freeform Portland, and it's, like, the first thing that comes up. Um, and when you donate, you can, basically, you can collect perks from about $10 upwards. Uh, so you can get something back. Just You can check what, what's available there. And also, no donation is too small or too large. And it is really greatly, greatly appreciated. So if you could give, that would be fantastic and such a great help. Thank you very much. Now let's continue with my chat with Mark Gardner from Ride. So then you get on to Tarantula. Was that split still going on with the songwriting, like, at that time? At that time, we tried to get into the studio, we sort of pulled together. Andy definitely just sort of started powering on with Trench a bit. I felt a little bit out of that process at that time. I didn't feel so much a part of the band at that time. Um, Why? Just because, for me, I didn't think we were really playing so well to our strengths. And I was too stoned. I mean, that was my problem. I was getting too away with the fairies, I guess, which didn't help. <laughs> kind of, yeah. The fe- you know, when you're already feeling, start to feel a bit isolated in something or in a project or in life, the worst thing to do was to smoke, smoke pot. pot. Yeah. Because yeah. then I was just, it's really stupid. But I just felt it was a point where we were going to crash, and I wasn't feeling the vibe. And the, st- the studio felt awkward. It felt like a hard record to make. It's, yeah. it was hard. And I mean, I, I went and did vocals. I, I wasn't getting anything back from. The producer mixer at the time I wanted to you know get more back to the kind of up my game if so to speak so I ended up doing vocals on that album with Jack Riley in America who did you know Beach was stuff who just recently died suddenly so it, I think it, by that point everything was just fragmenting a bit and when Ride are fragmented then we're not it, then the voodoo's lost because we actually need just to all be like I think what, what you learn you know with hindsight is when we look back at some of the strong periods of ride, it's just when we had that total togetherness, and that's four people, that's everyone putting in creatively, and that's that's how it worked best. And the beauty is, we've got the benefit of hindsight. We understand that's how ride really worked well, so we can kind of just go back to that way of working now. We actually, you know, hindsight's an amazing thing, but not often in life you get a chance to do something with hindsight you know, with that sort of distance and with the clarity that comes from having that sort of distance that you can never have when you're in the middle of the storm, which is what we were through all of that, or in the bubble, you know. So it's great. I'm really pleased with doing this. I mean, the last shows have just been off the wall. It's been amazing. So, because for many years, I didn't think I'd ever would feel that again. And in the last few years, I certainly feel felt that if I went on in my life, I never felt that voodoo that is right, so I try best describe it as that energy that's between us again, um, it'd be something I'd really miss, yeah. It might be a point in your life where, for whatever reasons, we couldn't do it as a force. So I'm just really glad we did it, because time isn't forever. It seems like when you're 20, yeah, off your head. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does. <laughs> so, um, and you know, you realise, as some people told me, well, it's not even for you, this is for us, because we were too young to see you the first time around. You know, it's like, 
I think probably about 80, I mean the demographics all over the place for these shows, so. I was going to ask you that actually, you know, mm -hmm. did, I expect there would be, you know, an older contingent coming out, but I was, would be. They're still there, they're still, just, still but seeing that. you, you there. actually have younger fans coming in to check yeah. you out as well, so that, you know. Testament to health, you know, how, how fear that we get, you see people are hitting, still in their 40s and they're still gigging and coming out and sorting out the babysitters and stuff, so <laughs> maybe the, maybe people weren't, nights weren't so sort of like, Screwy, druggy, or whatever, you know, because people are firing and going mad now, you know, that a variety right, group. But yeah, for sure, we're seeing lots of younger people. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about how you, you know, you kind of just left. Like, it, it was a bit of a shock for the band when you walked out in 1996. And, and in one of the books, this is terrible, but one of the books that I read said, Yeah, and Mark just left them all behind when they. <laughs> I think I think at that point any one of us would have it's just at a certain point and after how you know what happened with Trench that that's what I could say we just crashed I was the first one to get out of the crash wreckage did you I know you've done stuff since but the other some of the other members of the band kind of went on back to, and even Andy had a point where he thought he was going to get a, do a driving license because he thought the band was over mm. and you guys were on top you were gigging and 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 you know I, I don't know if it was Steve or Lawrence who said this but Said that you know suddenly the band was over. Yeah. After all living this life, they had to be. Yeah. Did you did you have a period like that? For after, sure. The bubble burst and you fall and you, you fall felt, out a long way. You were behind seven years of everyone else that you knew. Uh, or you know your other friends have had seven years on you in normal life things. You know, so you felt behind on that because you'd lived in a bubble. Yeah. It was if it, it was pretty rough. What was difficult was because when you're used to that when when rides becomes your way of life, you're used to high octane the way that things are, you then try and find that in other ways when it's not that, you know, maybe with drugs and whatever. affairs or yeah. people or situations or whatever, because that's just your way that you think that's how it has to be and, and partying. There's a lot of partying going on in my house, it's a bit of a kind of nightclub for a while. In the end I just sort of shut the doors and moved to medieval France, that's what I needed to do. <laughs> kind of medieval France. Yeah, I did, I moved to the middle of France in the medieval wilds and I was there for a good two years. What were you I need, doing? Were you I, I, was, I was totally, at that point, I was totally, because I'd done the Animals House project and I was totally and utterly empty, running on empty, totally drained after the whole ride experience and all of that. And what France did in a wonderful way that when you put yourself somewhere like that, it just, I just suddenly started to feel that life and, you know, whatever, people need and run on it was filling up again you know it's like I, I was you know it started to like this is a refueling time I liked it and I like being in that area it was it's beautiful I've always had a little bit of a kind of romantic thing about the wilds of France just being away and I don't know I just really needed it nature sorted me out and this is one of my better moves basically to end up here doing this it's like it's exactly what I needed um, and after two years of that too much to be a hermit and on your own at that time in the middle of France I mean I've got some friends around but then I started to feel good about energised and fueled again to then think, I can play music, I can start playing solo shows, I can start, you know, now I'm ready to give something back, you know, I've kind of, I've refueled um, spiritually, creatively in every way that I really need to do that. So I've always got a big soft spot in the heart for the France right. and those people in that time. It's great, nature heals. Yeah, yeah and also not to fight it, it's like, look, you've got, we've all got ghosts from our past, but Right, you know, that's what the thing about my record, these beautiful ghosts, it's like, those ghosts are beautiful. It's like, you don't fight and fight against that. You just embrace it. It's like, it's part, it's part a big part of who I am. It's never going to go away. I'm Mark Gardner, but to my dying day, I'm always going to be known to a lot of people as Mark Ride, you know, the guy I'm right. I know that. It's like, what? So, you know, I did a load of solo shows where I'm playing lovely music I've been writing with Robin Guthrie and lots of different people, and, um, you know, Two Square, um, some really interesting stuff, but of course, the ride ones are the ones that like well, that's people are like, really, you know, yeah, and that's fine. I mean, I, I understand that. That's why I always played a few of those songs, just be an idiot to sort of think that you know, you why make life really difficult go out and you know, it's part, it's a massive part of who I am, and yeah, it started everything for me, you know. So, you wanted to reunite Ride for three mm. years, and I, I, I know that Andy had a break from. Having a break from BD, is that? How did uh, they, were, they were just on a kind of a bit of a. I think they just stunned their second album. I mean, when I first talked to Andy about this, Andy was very much fully still involved with the BDI thing. So 
but at that point also Andy think it was something he wanted to do with the right thing of course we all have kind of I suppose have been feeling that for a bit yeah I mean for me I just I felt that uh, on all, in the last few years I've had a real thing that there was there was really some unfinished sort of sonic business and I just felt so feeling that I really sonic business. yeah and I felt I really wanted to play with these with these with these guys again um, and just and also watch seeing a lot of music bands or people watching the festival footage and stuff and just thinking there's quite a lot of bland yeah. people headlining Jesus. festivals and oh. doing stuff and I was just like and it's it's kind of just stupid to sit and go you know oh, that's just not very exciting to me you know when you know that you're potentially part of a band ride that is exciting and that you can actually do something about it it's stupid just to complain about things but you know there is there's something there I just get feeling more and more I'd love to show ride people right now you know if this is kind of what they're thinking is big good music it's like you can you can be edgy you can be psychedelic you can be noisy you can you know you can you can be something that isn't so bland and still end up doing winning on your own terms and playing big festivals what is this unfinished sonic business does this mean you're going to try and release another album new material what i did learn through the years is like when in life in general whenever you make plans never works out right so is there a, yeah, I, I would, a possibility I think there's a possibility yeah but it, it, right now what's happened and we're going with going with it is obviously since we played some shows lots more other festivals promoters people have checked it out we've been offered a whole lot more shows as a result so for now we're just really happy concentrating on giving it all back to the, all those people that have called for this um, with bowels on, if you know what I mean. So do you We're giving them, a, yeah, and that's as far as I think we want to look at the moment because. And then you'll see. You know, when you know you've got these shows coming up, the challenge was for us to get the sound back, to get us back, and to try and make it bigger and better than it ever was. So I believe we're doing that, and that was always going to be the challenge. And thinking beyond that at the moment, you know, I, what I have learned in life is just to enjoy right now. I'm, I'm enjoying this interview, this is all right. But today, <laughs> tonight, you know, we, we're playing the Roundhouse and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it, as I did last night when we did Manchester Albert Hall. It was amazing. And, yeah, I was going to ask you, what is it? You're here back in, you know, you've got this material, you are, you've got your mojo back. Yeah. I could hear it. I was watching you guys in the sound check and I was, like I said, when I was. Leave, leave them all behind when it started and you, there was just this amazing electric excitement in that you know you're probably just doing the soundtrack but it was like yeah what is it like to see those people again how is it different to what it when it was and the, we're heartened and so much more appreciative of the fact that this so could easily have never happened when you when rides all you know about as your first band experience you have no objectivity you have no way of that that's just how you knew things but only after that when you've worked with lots of different people artists and lots of interesting projects I've loved loads of the projects I've done post ride and in you know before this place but there was always a sense of something's missing and what's missing was it because it wasn't right and nothing ever feels like this it feels yeah like a kind of celebration of like when you stick to your guns a little bit and don't maybe you know, stay, stay feeling on the outside of um, the mainstream, stay, stay not repeating yourself, you know, refuse your successes in life, just stay on a tightrope feeling, you know, kind of more precarious edge of life existence place and maybe in time it will come good, you know, and you can do it on your own terms, you know, and keep it a bit more psychedelic, interesting, shoegaze, whatever, all the stuff we talk about, <laughs> whatever it is. What do you hope you did with Ride? What we've done. I just hoped we create some music that turns a lot of people on. And I think it echoes people's confusion. Certainly, I, I personally speak in lyrically or whatever, what I don't write about, I'm not, I write about my confusion. I'm not writing about, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have answers, just have confusion and I think something about the way we write and what we do, I think people sort of can pick up on that because I think we're as confused and vulnerable or whatever in the end as everybody else coming to the shows, you know, there's a sort of, we put our everything into it, our hearts are sold. So as you've got to on 
write down in music, in words. And, uh, you wrote about your confusion, and you hope maybe it made some people feel less alone in their confusion. Possibly. And in a way, it was presented in a way that rock, ego, you weren't Queen. I like Queen, you know what I mean? It's fine what they did. <laughs> I, like, I like some of what you two did back in the day. But you like, it, I also really like the feeling, you know, I like what Flaming Lips do now. It's a bit more of a show thing, but I also like the feeling that People can come there and feel that they could be you doing it. I don't, I don't want it to feel so divorced from the public, you know. I like that feeling that you could still come along to a show and feel like, we can do that. I think that's probably why a lot of bands do name check us or whatever, because it's, I think we're a good band that makes a lot of bands think we're good. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like you a band that inspires a lot of bands, I guess. Yeah, so like I can, you can pick it like punk rock. I can do that. Mm. You know, yeah, in but, a way. But in I, a different yeah. style. Yeah, I mean, I think, but hopefully, as a few of you have said, weirdly, it seems really fresh now. It's not and old, it's, yeah. it's, it's a combination of two different things. I right? hope so, yeah, and I think okay. it, if it's because you knew it then, so it will transport you to that place because you have the nostalgia thing, but I think it, for the kids that were, probably a lot of kids that weren't even born then, it's, it's like, kind of like when I, listen to 60s I wonder where music. it takes them, hopefully it just takes them off, you know, well, it's, it's like... It's like 60s music, and yeah. I wasn't there, yeah. but I kind of... But I got something of that. Definitely, me too. And we all were influenced heavily by, you know, like Crosby, you know, birds, people like that, of course. It's like beautiful, timeless, genius music. Um, I love a lot of that West Coast little period. Joni Mitchell is like, for me, a, a goddess. And I hope she comes through what she's going through at the moment. But I mean, it's like, it's just, she's, to me, like a queen of being able to say things with words that, wow, it made me, made me on the track. Not that I ever quite understand it, but <laughs> if I can understand womankind a little more, it's when I read or listen to Johnny Mitchell singing, it's just like women who can write and like that, that's just so beautiful. It's just totally fall in love with that woman. You know, the way she, you know, her music of that period and how oh, it's like, wow. It's just, that's what I mean. The music's really, it's a powerful, powerful thing. What it, how it affects people and I love it. I, I, I feel and as motivated and as buzzed on music still that, than I'd, I've ever felt. I read that when the, you guys came to the Carnival of Light, when you were trying to decide Britpop, your direction was actually, you were interested in dance music. I took note of it because you couldn't help but be affected by it because it had, just, it had grabbed lots of people and, and I did ex have that experience. I did go to raves. I did drop something I did get it you know I wanted to get it and it, it was amazing it was like it's great it was like the, it was where the people kind of showed authority in a way where it was all going wrong it's like people need to you know just want to go out and feel there wasn't problems with the people there wasn't killings and fightings or whatever it's just people wanted to go together and have a rave you know and if you if people can't get their systems together to, to provide that in a legal realistic way for people then people are going to go and do it themselves and I, think that, I thought that was a really strong sort of message and movement, you know, I think people. it's the English way, isn't it? It's kind of like, we have all these stupid laws, yeah. ridiculously stupid laws, yeah. and then we're like, well, we're not going to listen to you, we're going to do yeah. our own thing. Exactly. And we've been it's dancing like, in a field, because it's cold and it's crap. 11 o'clock closing time, I'm sorry, that's for getting soldiers back to the barracks for wartime, you know. And you kept that up. Which, and it still keeps going, it's like, there's no soldiers to get back to barracks now. Like, Europe, look at Europe, it's a bit more... Late night things. Oh, England's changed now much for the better. And I like that European influences have needed it because it's like, I want to drink and be able to eat late if I want to, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to be like, like you know, and I think I, I like the European influence on that. I think I I'm very pro Europe. I, I, I would, I, if I could, I would put a, that bit of land back so we can just walk in the grass. <laughs> Let's not even have sea around us. Let's just like be totally an acid part of Europe because I think Europe's amazing and I think it's. The, when you've got things on the east and west of that, I think if Europe's strong and united, the world's better for it. Um, so, Mark, thank you so much for all the twists and turns of that fantastic conversation. <laughs> it's, um, uh, it's quite, quite one. <laughs> okay, that was the end of my interview with Mark Gardner from Ride. Fantastic. Now I have an event to plug for my London listeners. On Saturday, May 30th, 2015, The Cool Kitchen is DJing at Paper Dress Vintage. That's 114 to 116 Curtain Road, EC2. 
It's live bands and free entry till about 10.30 p.m. because it's a late night party. That's going to finish at about 4. And I will be spinning an awesome selection of psych, soul, freak beat, and vintage rock and roll to get booties shaking on the dance floor. Good music to go with good clothes. Okay, I will be wrapping things up with one more ride song. But if you'd like to contact me, I'm on Facebook, MySpace, Google+, Hello, Tumblr, and Twitter. And if you'd like to check out more of my shows, because this one, like, blew your mind, uh, <laughs> I'm on Mixcloud, where you can follow me. And there's, like, a whole back catalog of great music and interviews there, too. And you can also go to my substitute for the fascism of my SoundCloud, which has got this kind of Nazi copyright thing going on, so I can't really post stuff at the moment and this website is called heartthis.at so my podcasts are living there now and it's a place that you can also download shows on so just search Ola's Cool Kitchen on any of those sites to connect or listen to me you've been listening to The Cool Kitchen on Freeform Portland Rock Access Radio Magic Monster Radio KCLA 99.3 FM in Los Angeles DCRC Radio 1 107.5 107.5 and how.fm in New Zealand and Primal Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now I would like to conclude with a song from 1992. This is Leave Them All Behind by Ride.